everybody, and welcome to a smoking wild ride with Steve-O. We've got jackass star Rachel Wolfson, who loves to smoke a lot of weed and who anybody would agree is smoking hot. So, man, do we get into it. Just details about jackass, about the, the all-cast jackass text thread, about the business, the finance. Man, I might have shared too much on this episode. But hey, that's what I do. I'm not afraid of sharing too much, and I'm not afraid of telling you how important it is to take a dump with your body bent. But what I mean by that is that our genetics, the human body, was designed to take a dump while crouching. That's how we do it in the woods, like this, right? It's not natural to sit on a toilet with your feet on the ground. And that's why to replicate the position that your body should be in to take a complete dump, you gotta have squatty potty. This is a stool that goes in front of your toilet that elevates your feet so that you're taking a dump crouching in a way that is good for your colon health. Not only good for your colon health, but super important for your health. Plus, it's way more satisfying to take a complete dump. So, I want you guys to try Squatty Potty. I've sworn by it for, gosh, 10 years now I've been using this. And I love it. My butthole loves it. And your butthole is going to love it too. Now, if you go to SquattyPotty.com slash Stevo, you can get your own with 20% off. Because that's how cool they are. So please support the podcast. Go to squattypotty.com slash Stevo. Get 20% off your order and treat your colon and your butthole with respect. Now, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Wolfson. Yeah, Hell dude. Yeah. Pound it. I don't have to introduce you to the... International star Scott Randolph. Yep. Hi, Scott. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Scott, Scott's got his best like dad outfit. All he's missing is a cigar right now. He like looks retired. I'm like the uh, the 2022 Magnum PI. I love it. You're ready. <laughs> I'm going for the chest hair look. You look like you should be on a yacht right now. I should be on a yacht right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so. Can we start off with any abortion jokes? Oh my God, please uh, get rid of those immediately. <laughs> That's my joke. <laughs> please, when in doubt, pull out. Yeah. Yeah. I like Chris Pontius's um, advice to the high school uh, graduating class. He says, a vagina is no place for semen. Oh, well, he is not without consent. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? You have to have consent. Are yeah. we off to a gnarly start? Yeah, and I liked uh, your rule of saying, like, dude, we should start out every male that's born, get them a vasectomy. If they decide to have kids, they should take a class, and they should redo that, and then they should have kids. Well, my argument was that people should um, have to get a license in order to mm. become parents. At know? least, like, a mental health check. Right. I yep. mean, you got to get a license to catch a fish. Or get a gun. Or drive a car. Right. Yeah, that seems fair. Yeah, I mean, to have it, a kid, you it, should it, probably it, take a test. You get pulled over for being a bad parent. They're like, show me your license and registration. It's like, just like you have a kid that's just like first time having sex. Like, oh, I feel so good. I don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a fucking kid. Yeah. Like, who wouldn't stop? It feels so good. <laughs> I mean, I think Steve-O needs to have his own birth control branded. His yeah. own plan B. We uh we know how it went with uh, Steve O condoms. Oh yeah, that that was yeah, not. They, good. You actually they, got people pregnant. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there are people out there who have kids because of you. Yeah, I don't know. I never actually sold any condoms, so thank God I have no uh, culpability for any pregnancies. And uh, I personally got a vasectomy, so I don't have to worry about. How long did you have to wait until you busted a nut after having a vasectomy? Uh, you think Steve-O waited? I don't think Dude, I The guy has the record <laughs> for the longest wait. Well, right. Um, but uh, I, I, didn't, I think that the wait, they said don't do any strenuous activity, and we know how I handled that. 
Yeah, well. But, but, but this isn't about me, Scott. We, we've, we've got uh, uh, Rachel Wolfson, the, the, the first official jackass cast member Hell yeah. with a vagina. Yes, well, that we know of. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Um, so uh, it, it's great, too, you know, that we're both in the, the, the jackass world and the world of just sort of comedy and how uh, how beloved you are in both. Oh, I thank think. you. Yeah. That's so nice. That and means a lot from you, Steve. I really look up to you in in both worlds. Just for the record. Not well, just, hmm. not just a, not just Jackass. Yeah. It's a rare stand up who says that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, like I don't give a fuck. Like fuck what any hater says. What you've been able to do and what you do is different. It's a one man show. It's comedic. It's visually entertaining. You make men throw up. What more and could pass we out. as and pass out as an audience member ask from you? I mean you entertain. Well, yeah. Well thank you. So, I, I appreciate showman. that a lot. You're a true showman. Um are we seeing the uh the effects of Jackass Forever and Jackass four point five um manifest as ticket sales for your comedy i mean i just did three shows in phoenix this weekend with matt we had like 255 people come out over the course of three shows i don't know anyone in phoenix so for me if i sell one ticket i'm stoked on that that's cool and we had you know 255 people so i'm starting to sell tickets in places that i've never been to and that i don't know um, people in and to me that's a success for me because I'm in a building phase sure you know? what do they uh, come up to you and say more I, I saw you in uh, forever or 4.5 Ooh, um, I think forever. I think people are still just getting around to seeing 4.5 because there wasn't that much promotion behind 4.5, mm. I feel like. Like, 4.5 kind of just dropped on Netflix, and, like, not everyone has a Netflix account. Yeah. But I'm what I am getting feedback is is people enjoyed 4.5 almost more or just as much as they yeah. loved forever. Yeah. I uh, have heard a lot of that, too. It's weird. I wish there was a way to get accurate numbers on what the aggregate viewing was for forever versus 4.5 because i gotta believe that with covid fewer fewer people were willing to go to the movie theaters that like the you know individually buying it on demand like versus like the number of people who have netflix mm -hmm. i think that uh my money would say that more people saw 4.5 than forever. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I mean, I'm getting feedback for both. I just don't know what I'm getting more of. I, I think they're just like, I saw you in Jackass. And like, that's just, right. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know which one. But I, the feedback I'm getting about 4.5 is everyone loves it. They're stoked on it. I mean, I think, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it's 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 landed it's nice, pretty well. It's a nice look at behind the scenes of like what goes on and how everything comes to fruition. And I think yeah, I think it answered a lot of questions for people of like how we got here and like, you know, just some things that after seeing forever that maybe like they didn't right. they were wondering about, you know. For sure. Um it it had a a narrative 4.5 that um that was uh digestible. It felt like a like a legit story. Right. I had a really cool moment in Phoenix. We had three girls come out who were very much jackass fans. And one of them um, came up to me after and she was like, I don't want to get emotional. And like we were, you know, talking after the show, smoking a joint. Doing and, Molly. Yeah, no, none of that. But but definitely joints. And she was like, you know, it meant so much to see a girl on jackass like i grew up a jackass fan and finally there was a girl and she got emotional and i was like don't do this you know we can't cry here but yeah it was really cool the reaction's been so positive you know for the most part and it, it's really cool to see support from female fans as well you know super cool were you nervous going in like like you had no idea what you were gonna do like where'd your brain take you of like oh fuck they're gonna do some gnarly shit or did you you just had no idea I literally had 
no idea. Like even walking to set that day, there was no discussion about what I would be even participating in. What I had no idea what stunts were being done that day. I didn't even know, like honestly, what I was there for. It's not that I didn't know. I knew I was like there to be work. Like I, I honestly, I didn't know. I just, I just showed up. They sent me a shoot date a te for the test shoot. Um, there were moments where like when we started shooting, you know, Jeff would say to me, don't volunteer for this or like, you know, like volun, you know, whatever. So I would get feedback along the way. I understood it that your role was to kind of like roast the, the guys, just kind of make fun of the mm -hmm. guys as they did their bits. Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, like there wasn't really any full discussion of what my role was like. I honestly thought um, I wanted to write, come write and be, you know, writing ideas and stuff. Um, but I, I mean, the fact that I got to participate, that was, you know, a dream come true. I mean, it was so cool. Um, and I think that my role kind of evolved over time because I'm honestly not naturally a roaster. I don't like to be mean and right. I don't I didn't. I knew you guys growing up in my bedroom or like in my TV, in my living, not in my bedroom, but in, in, under <laughs> my bed sheets. in my TV, <laughs> like in my, in my TV, you guys were in my house, like growing up and I know you as that. And I look up to you guys like, you know, brothers. Um, but also I didn't know you guys like that. So for me to roast you, it just seemed insulting. I, well, I, I did have that it. one joke, <laughs> you know, I had the diabetes joke that I dropped but it just came out and it just felt so natural and like it wasn't like it was just Preston, Zach was there, you know, and I don't know. I felt I'm not a natural roaster unless it's like about me. I know that that. Unless it's weed. Unless it's about me or I don't know. but Or unless I know you very well and I feel comfortable enough to like roast you guys. But even when I did drop that joke. It, it was a hit. It was a hit, but it might have ruffled some feathers. <laughs> it definitely ruffled some feathers. I didn't know oh, really? we weren't yeah. that close. You know, like we didn't. It's weird coming in as a new person, and then here I am supposed to make fun of you guys who've been family for you know twenty right. years. What what day number was this that you one? Were? Yeah, that <laughs> day, day one. <laughs> that was on the test shoot. And you know which what? I was not at. When I dropped uh -huh. that, when I said that joke, Spike comes up to me and he goes, more of that. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I think I got the idea of what I'm supposed to be doing here. So from that point on, just based off the feedback from what some of the guys gave me, it was like, just say as much as possible. But again, I'm competing with 12 comedic geniuses, you know, or at least like they know what they're doing. They know like what. Well, especially that's like their home court. Right. You know? It's like uh yeah. So, yeah, if there was any question about whether you would be involved, I know that specifically the diabetes joke really <laughs> secured your position. Well, I think at that, at that point, you guys kind of knew like Knoxville kind of saw my humor online, but it's different. You can be funny online. Does it transcend in person? How did Knoxville find you on like you said Instagram? Yeah, I, I had a joke. Um, I don't know if it was this one initially, but I noticed after like my OJ joke got put up by the Laugh Factory, it got 4 million views on Instagram and I got 15,000 followers and a bunch mm. of like, you know, um, bigger accounts started following me and it was around that time. So I don't know if it was initially that or if just the algorithm brought me, you know, in front of his algorithm. And yeah, and then he just was very supportive of my content on online and a lot of it was you know, observational, very much jackass style, you know, butt stuff, cum jokes, dick jokes, you know, that was very influential on in my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he sent you a, was his first message about like, Hey, we're going to make a new so movie or the message was, I will admit I was dying to hear the story about Knoxville sliding into Rachel's DMS and thank God we get to hear it all. And man, I know that a bunch of you are probably just watching because Rachel's attractive, but please, you got to admit I'm looking great too. And you know why? It's because I'm taking care of my skin, baby, with the best products out there for skincare. It's called Geology. G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E. Geology.com is where you get it. And man, are they going to hook you up if you go to geology.com and use the promo code STEVO. You're going to get a five 
piece starter kit valued at 50 bucks for just 15 bucks and up to 70% off your 30 day trial. I'm telling you that this geology eye cream is the secret to success, man. The eyes are the first things to go, but not mine because geology's got me covered. So jump on this deal, support the podcast, take care of your skin, reduce your acne, get rid of the oil, and stave off the wrinkling by going to geology.com and using the promo code Stevo. They're taking care of you, so you take care of them. Now, let's hear about those DMs. Hey, um, it was, hey, I want to can I give you a call? I want to see if you're interested in something. I want to talk to you. It was like an initial, like, I want to see if you're interested in something basically. Uh So I gave him my number and then like five minutes later he called me and that's when he would, he said it was an anniversary special. Right. I didn't know it was a movie, but whatever it was, he said it it was jackass. And as soon as I heard jackass, which in my heart, I was hoping he was saying, which was, you know, and he's like, "Is that? would you want to come in for a meeting with me and Jeff? And I was like, yeah. So I went in for the meeting. And all they said was, we're going to be shooting, I think, initially in October, the first, when they, the first discussion. Right. But it ended up getting pushed way, right, way right, back. Right, 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 right. It was December, the uh-huh. test, yeah. And would you want to come play with us kind of thing? And I was like, yeah. But I didn't know what that meant. I just was down right. to clown. Like, it didn't matter. But I did say, I was like, hey, if you guys have any writing sessions, like, I would be so down to participate because that's where my strengths lie is in writing. So your boyfriend, mm-hmm. now you're engaged? No. No, just a boyfriend. Well, well pump the yeah. brakes, you know. <laughs> now they are. Okay. Um, so your boyfriend, like, what, what was that conversation like? Yeah, you know, I got a DM from Knoxville. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you know, we didn't, um, Matt and I started dating maybe like um, a couple months after that. Oh, okay. And I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell, I was going through a breakup at the time and it was actually a really like hopeful thing in my life that I didn't, I was like, I don't know if this, how this is going to play out, but I just received a call from Knoxville. Like I'm doing good, you know, like, uh-huh. fuck that guy who, who we bro- I broke up with. Oh, okay. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and so it was, um, Matt and I started dating in July, like right around this time, three years ago. So that phone call was, I think May. Right. That's about, it sounds about right. And so, you know, I didn't tell him right off the bat because I'm not right. going to be like, hey, just so you know. Right. I just kind of like casually as we got to know each other, let him know that um, I've been having conversations. But don't tell anyone because. Sure. Don't. Did he get intimidated? No. He nah. was so stoked. Dude, her, her boyfriend's the man. He's I, so I, nice. I love him. He's so nice. He's and he loves you guys. And he grew up as much a jackass fan as yeah. like all of us. And. I think, you know, for him, it's also, he's a comedian too. So for him to see a a young comedian come in, hit the ground running, fucking hustle. Like he knew and saw me and heard about me before we started dating and saw the content I put online and even like was aware of, oh wow, she's like in, she's really good at this internet stuff. And um, he was stoked. He was stoked. Cool. Yeah. How would you guys meet? Did you slide into your DMs? <laughs> Actually, I slid into his. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. Um, we met at the comedy store. We were both dating other people, and a mutual friend introduced us. And um, what'd you say? I said, "Hey, can you take this picture of me and my hot friend?" <laughs> like, and he ended up taking a selfie of himself. Um, so I had that picture of him, and. I think we didn't speak until maybe three years after that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and I found out he is, he had become recently single and his mentor was Jeff Garland and he, mm. Jeff is also a mentor of mine. Um, and I knew that. So I hit up Jeff and I was like, it was actually father's day and Jeff and I went and had lunch on father's day and <clears throat> I was like, Hey, you know, your opener, Matt, like what's his deal? And he was like, Oh, <gasps> It's perfect. And nice. then, you know, we ended up meeting up after I that. love your boyfriend's joke. And by the way, her boyfriend's name is Matt. Matt Edgar. Yeah. Matt yeah. with one T. Matt Edgar. He says, uh, you know, dating 
uh, you know, my girlfriend, you know, she's working on Jackass, and you know, people ask me like, man, you must be like threatened, like she's like, going hanging around all these naked dudes with their dicks out and everything, and he's like. Well, it does bother me because I want to be there. Yeah, he's like, I grew up on those dicks. He, he's like, if I ever saw Pontius' penis in person, I get starstruck. You know, yeah, yeah, he's like, I'd sure. ask for a dick pic. And he's so stoked, and it, honestly, it wouldn't have worked out with me and someone who wasn't supportive. I would have broken up with him, and for sure. Yeah, yeah. Pontius <laughs> must have the record for like dick time on the dick movie. Dick time. Is it? Is that a real thing? Has somebody looked that up? Uh, I'm sure I, 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 but Mr. Skin, where are you at? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like six, seven minutes of solid. It should go in the time. Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> I know. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, g- growing up with a, uh, a a DA as a father, mm-hmm. and and your dad's a DA, your mom's a judge, right? She was a judge. Um, she's now a mediator, but she was um, the judge who put OJ in prison in Las Vegas. Judge Ito. No, no, that was the, <laughs> I, people are like your mom's Judge Ito. I'm like, no, my mom. <coughs> but it, is is growing up with a, like a DA as a father is like the same thing as like being a preacher's daughter? Like, <laughs> do you get in trouble? I or mean, would it... my dad answer the door with a shotgun? No. Um, it's. I guess it would be. I guess I, you would have to ask the men who have tried to date me. I don't know. I, 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 it probably is intimidating. I don't think that that's the question I, more. I, I think I that he's like, saying like that. Are you like wild? A, like a Catholic oh, school. Girl. Oh, 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 oh. Cause, see, I'm Jewish, so I didn't get the joke. Um, <laughs> but you no, grew up in Vegas. I mean, were you going I was buck definitely, wild? you know, I was like, I definitely was a rambunctious kid. I was a hyper kid. I had ADHD as a kid. I was diagnosed from a very young age. So... Um, I played sports, like, and I was always getting in trouble in the principal's office. Mm. Like, I went to um, religious schools. Um, I went to a Christian school in Vegas, and I think that's how my mom tried to like curb my, yeah. like, you know, wildness, or at least prevent. Because I didn't do, I wasn't like drinking or doing drugs, but you know, I would sneak out of the house. And yeah. when when did you become such a pothead? You know, it wasn't until I got to college um, because, you know, I I had taken a lot of pharmaceuticals. Um, You know, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 12 and from a very young age had taken pharmaceuticals for a lot of my mental health, you know. Like um, Ritalin and... I was on Adderall. I started on Adderall when I was five. Wow. Did you ever Mm -hmm. snort it when you were five? No. (laughs) Although if I did, I would have been the coolest kid. For sure. Um, but I uh, it, did it work like it, it makes everybody else hyper and stay awake. You like, know how many businesses I had when I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But does, does, isn't that like what the deal is with ADHD? Like, yeah, the, the I was able to focus. Me. Like at five, I felt like you know, um, yeah, I could conquer the world. <laughs> but I'm yeah. on legal meth, so yeah. Um, yeah, doing doing blow back in the day like really like made me like recluse and like inward. I didn't get hyper. I mean, I got hyper, but like I just, I think that would be the same effect as ADHD Medicaid. Like Ritalin would make me like real like. Mm. I was very serious. I would be. It would make me very irritable. Um, but I was. I would hyper focus on whatever they wanted me to focus on. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So when I was nineteen, I went away to college, and a boyfriend of mine smoked weed, and. I was still on pharmaceuticals at the time and I, I tried it and I remember liking the way it made me feel. It just made me feel, I don't know, better. Hmm. So. And then did you stop the medication or did you still continue? Eventually I came off the pharmaceuticals. I was 23 when I came off and. Did, um, that, did that suck? Um, It wasn't like, it wasn't as bad as it could have been because I did it with the advice of a doctor I was like, how do I taper down um, with support? And I wanted everyone to know, like I did it the way that you're supposed to do it. I'm like, I'm not going to just fuck around with this because if certain medications that I was on, if you come off, you can have a seizure. Mm -hmm. Um, Certain medications I was on, if you don't take it the right way, you can develop a deadly rash. I mean, this stuff is gnarly. Hmm. Um, So yeah, and I I came off and I've been off since I was um, 23 years old, I believe. Wow. Or sorry, I was, excuse me, I was 26. I believe yeah all right what can you tell everybody about the crazy jackass cast thread (laughs) honestly like when i received the text from you guys in my mind i'm like 
if only people knew the fl- like what I what I see, what goes on, the conversations. I feel so blessed to be a part of of it. It's pretty gnarly. And the access to early content drops. I mean, <laughs> I really I I'm so happy I get to be a part of this chat and this you know this family. But yeah, uh, it's it um, really is a special thread. Except I think. Poopy's kind of abuses. He it. really does, and he should only like Poopy should only be able to promote like one piece <laughs> of content. I mean, promote content. Also, like... and you know, like there's other certain pieces of content we receive from Poopy that no one should see. No one, not can, even, can not you, even God. Can you talk about it? I no. mean, I, I don't even. Think, I, don't <laughs> I, think don't wanna, any... I don't think we should talk about it. It's nothing like illegal. Um, it's I just mean... criminally boring. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Uh, I, I wish that there was a way to revoke Poopy's um, access to this thread. On you know, like at there least... should be like censor. Like there should. You know how you can censor the words you see on Twitter and social media, <laughs> and the yeah. content you see. It's not a bad idea. But I mean, let's not create the impression that uh, that I'm mad at Poopy. No, we love Poopy. He's 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 very uh, innocent and and his own little way like mm-hmm. he's uh he's, he's a special guy in the eyes of the lord maybe but not, <laughs> not in anyone else's eyes right but, but but it's a lot of fun and i bring it up because you're so classic in that thread like oh whenever, thank you whenever it, it, it gets a certain point like there's 13 people in the thread so you've got Every single cast member, old and new, except Wee Man, opted out. I didn't even realize that until uh, Dave England told me. Why? Oh, Wee Man's he left? not in it. Yeah. He left. Wee Man hasn't been in it for like. I thought he was in it, but he just doesn't respond. Yeah, oh no, it's too. Aaron barely responds. Yeah, and uh, hmm. but everybody's in it. Tremaine's in it. You know, Knoxville. Like, um, and and we'll get into this like everyone's throwing in like zingers and like it's a joke and it's almost a joke off and virtually 100 percent of the time rachel like chimes in with the funniest oh text. thank you oh, it's so fun to be a part of it's fun it's fun i i definitely i will say in the group chat poopy's butthole has made a made, a, made an, an appearance, appearance. Yeah. yeah yeah we all well, know it's not poopy's butthole as much as the balloon knot attached to it right <laughs> what it's um some would say it's art. I don't know. Why did he send that? <laughs> it's not that it, he didn't send it. It's just uh, it made an appearance. <laughs> his butthole has been revealed on set, and it's become the stuff of legend. Mm-hmm. And it gets referred to um, <laughs> quite often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's. I didn't know I was part of the cast until like after we shot the movie. You know what I mean? Like there was a conversation after where. Like they were like, oh, you're an official cast member because like right. I didn't an opening credit, right? And I, I, you know, I, I was just grateful to be there and to have that experience and to work with you guys. So that's how I'm always approaching any situation. How has your life changed before and after? You know, I don't. It, to me, it's like hard for me to see. Other than like obviously my social media following has increased, but like I'm not like I was never one to like. I guess like I still feel the same like I'm still doing the same thing I still go to the same open mics I still hang out with the same people you know I'm not like flying around on private jets I don't have like a million dollars or more dudes sliding into your DMs 100% I guess that's different (laughs) oh my god that reminds me dude she gets the craziest fucking DMs oh yeah dude the DMs that she gets are so nuts everyone wants me to like Everyone wants me to like put your hot sauce in my butthole for some reason. Like my butthole is just like a huge topic of conversation in the DMs. They want to put the hot sauce dude, for your butthole in your butthole. Dude, they want they 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 want it. I don't know. Rachel <laughs> started an a separate Instagram account strictly for the most hilarious DMs <laughs> she receives. And you just post them? She, yeah. she respectfully, but I post them anonymously yeah. because... She respectfully blurs out like the handles, so she's not there blurting are, up there anybody's There are spot. wives and kids involved. I'm sure, you know, there are. <laughs> yeah. But and, dude, like, there's shit like, I, I want to... Eat cereal feet. out of your booty hole. 
And so I called them I mean, booty pebbles. Like, Why it, is it, it all it, about your butthole? It's one well, of the not best. all of them are. Actually, I do get some wholesome messages. Like, I got this message from this guy my mom sent to prison years ago. But he was like, to be <laughs> fair, he was like, listen, your mom gave me so many chances. I went through her court. I couldn't get sober. But because of her, I got sober because he finally got his life together. It took like seven times that, or something. That wouldn't have made the Wolfie DMs. It did. It did. Oh, because it, did. It, it did make the Wolfie DMs because it was so outrageous that my mom mom had you know sent this guy to prison and here he is one saying so nice things about her and saying how much of a jackass fan he was so right, that one because okay. yeah. i like to make i don't want it to always be sexual because like it's that's just like an easy grab i think like okay sex, and i think maybe i do remember that yeah but so i mix it up some are i, I there's some wholesome ones what's the there. worst one you've gotten um <laughs> Or the what's the what's the link so people can go check it out? It's Wolfie DMs, W O L F I E DMs. Steve-O has, has been a supporter pretty much from, since the beginning, so I, I thank you for that. What can I say? I'm a fan of filthy DMs that make me laugh, and Rachel supplies them on the regular. Now you know what else I'm a fan of? Doing business online, selling merch. Just last week, we did this uh, Post Malone video where we did a limited pre-order for t-shirts. And I'm going to tell you, candidly, we sold a whole lot of t-shirts. We actually put ourselves in a position of sending out um, over a thousand packages in one day. And that is a lot, but it's easy for us because we use ShipStation. That's how we run my entire e-commerce operation is with ShipStation. It's one interface which integrates all of your different platforms that you sell on. If it's on Amazon, Etsy, your own website, doesn't matter. It's all just funneled into one place as well as all of the different shipping carriers like the United States Post Office, UPS, FedEx. See what I'm saying? Plus, they give you the best rates for shipping, which are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. You get the best deals, and you print out your labels, slap them on the package, ready to go. It makes shipping so easy. That's how we do it. That's how we ship thousands of packages in a single day. And you can get a 60-day free trial. You can try this service for absolutely nothing for an entire 60 days. And you, too, can be shipping stuff like crazy, and it's so easy. So to get this offer, you go to ShipStation.com. And when the website loads, click in the top right corner. You click on the microphone. You type in the promo code Stevo, and you're set up to try 60 days of absolutely free, hassle-free, super easy shipping, enjoying such low rates. You can't beat it. So jump into the business game by selling merch online with ShipStation. Make ship happen, baby, by going to ShipStation.com. Um, click the the microphone in the top right corner, type in the promo code Stevo, and get to work. Now, let's talk more about these DMs. Um, you know, I just someone said I no, that one's inspirational. Um <laughs> you know, um they, 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 he's they jacking get, off, giving you a Gandhi pretty. quote. People are like, um so, uh Oh no. Okay, this was bruh, I would love to lick whipped cream out of your beautiful, magnificent, and exquisite booty hole. I don't know why they're obsessed with my butthole. Um and how do they know it's so exquisite? I know, and <laughs> someone someone like people are really they're like, I'd let you ruin my life. Um oh, oh, if you were my mom, I'd still smash. That was pretty, that was one of the worst ones. Wow. <laughs> um it's pretty epic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean Oh so, yeah, just a lot of a lot of really, you know, horrible good great things in there. Mm. So, um have you uh like done a lot of hard drugs? Not as much as I think people think I've done. I'm not really into drugs. Like I'm really just into what makes me feel balanced, you know, like normal, I guess or as normal as I can get. Well, 
Well, I mean, <laughs> what kind of like, drugs have you done? Like I, I've done Molly before. I've done bad Molly, and that was enough to never make me want to do it again. Like once you do the bad version of the drug you think you're doing, normally that would make you want to stop. Well, for me, it ma- it makes me never want to do it again. Yeah, that's an issue. I, I never asked you about. Uh, you ever done a drug where you're like, oh fuck, I shouldn't have done that, or you were like, just like, yes, like when I drank aluminum cleaner. Oh my god, what? I think that's what it was. Like, uh, there was some like aluminum cleaner shit. And I fucking couldn't get off the kitchen floor. Like, well, because you told me about a time when you were in New York and you just felt like you were free falling and like. Yeah, no, that was in London, England. That was on ketamine. That oh, sounds that's horrible. Yeah. My friends who would do that in college and just it, do it in their dorm rooms. It, it, it was it was the greatest and ever. What, you're you're snorting ketamine and all of a sudden you're done snorting it. You're I, like, I'm, I'm I'm just like so utterly fucked up on ketamine that the hotel room I was in just started free falling and like i i was like looked up and it was like the i, I lo- was looking up at like a shaft that it was falling through it was the greatest thing that ever happened and while that was happening you were like fuck yes i was like this is the raddest fucking thing yeah i would have freaked dude see that just- stuff scares me i think because like i think because i was forced to take pills grown as a kid there's never i'm I don't have that desire so much to do drugs. Like, there's, I don't, I don't really do that many drugs. Like, I've done coke, I've done once, you know, I've done mushrooms here and there, but I really just like weed. LSD? No, Molly, that was it. All right. Heroin? No. (laughs) No, never, never had the urge. So, um, you were on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. And uh, was that to promote the movie? It was to, pro- to, to promote the movie. That was in February. Epic. Yeah. It was epic. That was also another surreal moment. I mean, yeah, these, I guess because it's been so much time, I forgot like all the stuff that happened directly after the movie came out. Like that was such a cool moment hanging with Kimmel and um, doing that show. And he's such a um, big supporter of Vegas and obviously yeah. comedy. So, um, yeah, huge fan. And what other big shows have you been able um, to be I on? did Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, the was, uh-huh. that's Bravo. The Burt Kreischer's podcast. I did Burt's yeah. podcast, Love Burt, and yeah. I love how much he loves Jackass and he all really of you guys. He really does. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's so, so supportive of us. So He's the best. Um, weren't you on, um, like, what was it, Wendy Williams or something um, like that? No, no, I didn't do Wendy Williams. I was on, I think it was, um, uh, whose podcast? Um... I don't know. I mean, I did Uncle Joey's podcast. Um, I'm. It's been like a while, so I haven't. It's been so long. I haven't. Um, I can't remember. I did a bunch of promotion right after the the movie. That was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What a trip. Yeah. Life changing. Literally, and it. It's it's crazy because I feel like I, my situation. I got into stand up. Twenty sixteen, and I book a movie. 2019 three years into my stand-up career i mean that is i never got into stand-up to get into movies i got into stand-up to learn the art of stand-up and and the fact that i even was able to get here is so cool to me and i'm so grateful for you guys and i try to tell knoxville you know like anytime i can because i am so like i i just am so stoked i got to have that experience with all of you yeah well i'm, so. I'm grateful to you i mean when uh Whenever I've reached out, like you've always just been been all about it. I was like, hey, can can you guys come over and uh, you know watch a recording of my live show and give me notes oh, yeah. and stuff? I'm uh, Team Stevo, so whatever whatever you need, Stevo, I got you. What day number did you guys do the mime bit? Was that right off the bat? Or I was, was pretty that... well into it. Yeah, see, that's the stuff. Like later on, because you know, COVID hit, and there was I think they had other ideas. Maybe you know, nothing official, but remember like COVID hit like and then we had to readjust some things I think a lot of the stuff I think they ended up being able to do but there's probably stuff that we that might have been done had COVID not happened um you know so yeah I mean it was really quick and they had two days for the test shoot then there was one week of filming principal photography before COVID shut everything down so basically you know, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible how much of those two days mm-hmm. of test footage made the movie. Yeah, that was that wasn't that's actually 
Oh, that so was insane. That was test footage. The the mime. A lot of, <laughs> no, 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 that no, wasn't. No. But a lot of the stuff in Forever and in Four Point Five are from the test shoots. It made the movie. Yeah, yeah. like almost everything mm-hmm. that you guys shot. Mm-hmm. Did you know the day of that you're gonna lick the taser, or did you really just know in real time that it was gonna happen? Um, no. Jeff called me, and both the times with the scorpion and the taser, they asked if I would be down, and I said, "Yeah, I would be down." They actually asked me if I initially would be down to do do the snake poopies. Wow. Uh, but, and I said I would I was down. It was pretty rad how like being there how well you handled licking a taser. Oh, I, w- I would have yeah. been a super bitch about that. <laughs> you never licked And a taser. she did it over and over and over. That's what people don't always understand is that when we shoot something, you see it happen once, mm-hmm. but in reality it happened over and over and over. Yeah, that's what Jeff likes to do. Well, yeah. how many did, uh, how many times did you get stung by the scorpion that we didn't see? Oh, a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, and we used like three different scorpions. The one that we saw isn't even the most painful one. That one just like hurts a, a little bit, but there was this one that was super tiny. Um, I forget what. The smaller it's, the scorpion, the oh, gnarlier. It was small, it was translucent, but it was harder to see on film. But that one was so painful. That's the one you actually see me reacting to at the end where I'm starting to sweat, starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that and that I just let them because they wanted to see my lip puff up like cartoon. Sure. But it, I did, my body didn't react that way. I mean, it puffed up, but not cartoon. I feel like you've been bitten by, or stung by a lot of scorpions. Yep. A lot of them. Like how many would you say? I mean, the, the first time uh, was when I was on tour in, like, 2003 with the African Emperor Scorpions. Then we actually went to Africa, messed around with a bunch of scorpions. Is that the small one? The African the, the Emperor? The African Emperor one is the black one. Okay, that's the one that they shoot. Yeah. The sh- yeah. That one's that, still not great, but yeah, not as painful as the small ones. Hmm. Fuck that. Yeah. Um. With, uh, is it true? Of course it's true that, um, that after the fact, you guys got your deals, all the new people, uh-huh. and it was like, they're going to pay you the least amount of money that they legally can to be a principal cast member. <laughs> but then after the fact and after the movie came out, they came to you and said, Hey, we're going to give you guys participation in the back end. Um, okay. So I don't know what everyone else's discussions were because again, my situation was different. I wasn't like from the beginning, I didn't know I was an official cast member so the 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 payments i were receiving were just like i wasn't sag yet so they just paid me a certain amount every two weeks and as a comedian i'm just stoked to to Uh to see it and i'm just stoked to be working so to me it didn't seem like out of the ordinary i also didn't have reps when i i booked jackass on my own so like i didn't have to cut Uh anyone 20 percent or anything so again like i was just stoked to be working um at the end when um when we kept getting word that the movie release was pushed back there was a conversation were you on the call for that one i don't think so i I remember when they they had like uh one call for og cast and one call (laughs) yeah i'm sure um so yeah there was a conversation with all of us where um they, they announced that they, it wasn't going to be October. It was pushed to February. Yeah, and that was like, man. I mean, after, like, for us, you guys are, you guys are all. It's okay when it comes out, it comes out. But for us, new cast members, I mean, this is like the beginning of the rest of our careers, of our lives. Like the pandemic hits, we need some good news. And when they came to us and told us it was going to be like another six months, it was just like, oh my god, what are we going to do? You know? Mm-hmm. It was so funny on our call. It was just the OG guys and uh, Spike and um, Tremaine. And like whoever's speaking, like that's the what the screen shows. It was so funny because uh, Tremaine says like they're, they're pushing the release date to February. And, and then all of a sudden the screen turns into Dave England going, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the screen becomes me. I'm like, Dave, what are you talking yeah. about? I was like, the, you know, the, 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 the trailer's out. Yeah. Like, there's a big buzz around it. And this, the second this movie mm. comes out, it's old news mm. and we're washed up has again. No, you're right. It actually ended <laughs> up, it, that was the beautiful part is in retrospect, it ended up working out 
in our favor yeah. like in way in so much better because there was so much more promotion it like people felt like you know we, it, we, it, there was a buzz around the whole right. thing and i was like as soon as it comes out we're over like old news by by delaying the release to like you know months down the road we're extending this period of time that we're like hot shit that has a, a buzz around us right and uh, and then I'm, and then you see Spike. He's like, "Wow, I never thought of it that way." And then you see Tremaine. I need everybody to be on their best behavior. Yeah, that's the. W- I th- honestly think that's the most. That <laughs> but Poopies has six months more. To not fuck this up. No, I mean honestly, like it it, it ended up working out um, for all of us, and and it was like such a nice surprise. Any extra information that we got about you know financial sure. so again like i'm just grateful and yeah i mean i was, I was i'm just stoked to, to i mean work. yeah I, I heard that it was like after the fact after i think maybe even after the movie came out and they said like hey we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna give you guys participation in um, the back that end. was before actually that was before the movie came out but it was during that call when they said they were gonna push it uh, so i think to keep was, us from yeah. not killing ourselves um rachel's like wait what i was they, like <laughs> people are getting participation yeah. points well I, I just i <laughs> i didn't i didn't i didn't i just was stoked I just right. was stoked. Well, I know, and I, I just I bring that up because I was personally really impressed and happy to hear that. You know, like yeah. you know, th- over the years, going back to the beginning, like you know, try, trying to get paid, it, like it, it wasn't a real mm-hmm. easy thing. You yeah, know? and uh, for them to offer that up to you guys when they really didn't have to, like I, I just wanted to. Uh, to tell them like guys that's fucking cool of you and I'm well glad. i mean of course like we've heard the stories about how you know how it was before and right like it is different now and we are a new cast and we we do have it different than you guys and in a sense of like how things are just because we're the new generation and you kind of like laid it down sure. you know like <clears throat> paved the path for us so you did it's almost like being the firstborn you know the second the baby kind of gets you know, treated a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, And so my experience has only been positive, like throughout the whole thing. I have nothing bad to say, like about anything that happened. Not that like you were implying that or anything, but it's, I think in Hollywood, it's so rare to have that experience, especially on an all male cast, being the only female, you know. Well, yeah. And, and gender aside, the reality is that, you know, people would line up for miles to be able to be in a Jackass movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like I get a lot of submission tapes. <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah. you could argue that there's like so many people would want to be in a Jackass movie, regardless of whether they got paid. That it's almost like they don't have to pay right. people to be in it. Well, and that's so, that's totally like I mean, coming from a comedy place like we do a lot of stuff for free in the beginning yeah and and that's what i'm saying like i was just even shocked that i was even my name was thrown in the hat for this because you know i'm not a pro skater i don't have that background my background is comedy which is what you guys do so you know like i still can't believe even to this day that i was able to be a part of it so i am still very stoked on it and it's still very cool to me and that i hope that I hope that shine never dims, you know? For sure. No, I think it won't. You have a great attitude. Thank you. Everyone's super stoked and, and uh, you know, you, you you earned the spot. I mean, everybody earned it. And, you know, like I said, they didn't even have to give you anything. And, and they did. And yeah. I, I was really impressed by yeah. that. Yeah. So it's, you know, and I, yeah, I, I, I just feel really good about the whole thing. So. Do you have a favorite Jackass 4 bit forever? Um, obviously anyone that I'm right. in, no, but, um, honestly, like silence of the lambs was yeah. incredible. I think that's the hardest I ever laughed. When, oh man. Uh-huh. Just like Dave's <laughs> reactions and Pontius, like being like the crazy the music. woman. Yeah. I'm, I, it's so good. And it's, I mean, dark shark's so amazing. He's so funny. And just seeing his reactions and situations, the fear lock. Oh yeah. Um, obviously any bit Steve O's in is iconic <laughs> and legendary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it, it was just so fun. Like I, it, it, it's like being at Disneyland as an adult. Cause when you leave set, you're like, wow, what was that? You know, reality sets back in. Like, yeah. It's so funny. Like some of the most fucked up stuff happened to you and like, you couldn't talk about it. And then you would come here to film a, a, a podcast and we're like, Oh, how was your day today? And you're like, Oh, it's cool. And then like, <laughs> then seeing the movie, you're like, Oh fuck. Like that's what you were doing. It like, was so <laughs> hard to keep it secret for years. Like just act like, like, just live my life you know yeah well people kept keep, people kept wondering why steve was looking like the dude from tiger king jeff with the <laughs> headband <laughs> over it. yeah yeah every podcast we did he had the head the, the headband because of, your, because of the eyebrows yeah yeah i mean it's just so classic that in the middle of principal of photography like what director is like okay yeah let's rip steve-o's eyebrows off <laughs> especially when the when the whole idea was that we were gonna tattoo a penis on my fucking <laughs> forehead where the eyebrow was and you guys never did that like uh at the very last second knoxville was like there's too much dick stuff we're not that's the one they decide to pull out from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like no that's i mean i'm still gonna get a dick tattooed on my forehead but uh but yeah it's just it's just crazy that but yeah that that uh i there was no explanation for why I was the the Steve Low. <laughs> Steve Low, that's it. or Jeff Low. That's so funny. <laughs> Steve Low. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Do you, do you have any shows coming up? Um, yeah, I have dates. I'm gonna be in New York, um, July 31st at the Stand. I got my own um, show there. I have dates in Tampa, Orlando, and Miami in August wow. on my website. I have dates in um, Austin in November at Vulcan. Nice. What's, what's your website? Uh, Rachel Wolfson Comedy dot com. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's Rachel Wolfson Comedy. Also, Steve O's been such an inspiration for like Rachel Wolfson Comedy dot com. Seeing like his websites and what he did to Knoxville's website, <laughs> his art. Um, yeah. So honestly, I really look up to you, and like a lot of us comedians do, and and like what you've done as yourself is. It's incredible. So it's really cool to have someone to look up to. Well, with thank that. you. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I had set you up with Scott on uh, text to get you going with um, some, some merch. Yeah, I've um, I've been struggling with my merch because every I just every merch person either ghosts me. Not that Sheila ghosts me, but like I don't know. I've just been struggling. Do you have designs? Um, I have some designs, but that's what I need help with essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have. I just I'm in like a crisis with my merch. Let's get you set up. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think that we, we've got a fairly large audience. We get um, like Poopy's merch is dope, and if Poopy's merch can be dope, mine we, can be we, mediocre we, at, we, at, that, at least. We did that. Yeah. Okay. Then. <laughs> I need to be working Dude, with Poopy's so, merch people. It's so funny, like the the stuff that we've done for you know helping the guys get on their feet. You know, no, we need it. We don't like we you you realize like before this, you know, Poopies was just like a, he's not a marketing person. Like, you know, really? he doesn't, well, you know, he doesn't he doesn't you know, we're well, learning as we go in some of these the thing things. Was, like we, we were re we were so ready to help Poopies. We're like, OK, we got these designs made now. Now, Poopies, we're like, we're going to uh we're gonna order like this many shirts we're gonna help you um like with your online store putting it together fulfilling the orders poopies was not able to respond <laughs> to any emails from the people who are trying to make like produce his shirts oh, he needs an assistant <laughs> he needs a number two. Now I feel like I can roast poopies because I know him. you know what I mean we yeah. can say we can say we can you know. But um, but we should absolutely like yeah, we should absolutely Please, get some designs. I need designs any. Cracking. I need help. I just have one shirt on my website that's. I had designs. None of them sold. They've been up for months. And then we know for a fact that Rachel Wolfson checks her DMs. <laughs> so <laughs> I do. Let, let let's enlist some help from all of the graphic well, designers out also, there in the audience. I do. I want to say like I do get a lot of really great art made. I'm sure you've seen because we get made by the same artists and stuff. There's a lot of people who are willing who do design right. and do stuff, and I am grateful for all of them. And I have some designs made from them and stuff, but you know, I'm open to my merch direction. Cool. Yeah. Happy to help. Mm. 
Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. For sure. So we've covered your uh, your upcoming shows. Yeah. We've got uh, we've got your DM Instagram, mm-hmm. but what's your is your normal Instagram just Rachel Wolfson? Yeah, it's Rachel Wolfson. I got my own name on Instagram. So it's official. Nice. Do you have the check mark? I do. I got a blue yeah. check. I just got a blue check mark on TikTok, although I have no idea what I'm doing there. I love TikTok. You do? Scott is yeah. obsessed with you're, TikTok. You, you're on TikTok? Dude, I love TikTok. It's the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, no, I but no, say, I do like it. I believe it. Like, there, you could be the biggest star on TikTok I wouldn't even know. Well, I just repost these clips. And, like, oh, okay. I have, like, 86,000 followers. Really? It just it just starts going ape shit. Oh my god! Scott Randolph eighty three on TikTok. <laughs> I think it's because he's really attractive. Yeah, I mean it's. I've obviously... lost thirty pounds. I feel yeah. good. You are, you are looking really good. Is it the Hawaiian shirt or is it the cologne it's that I'm both. wearing? I mean, your 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 skin is glowing. It's the tan. I've been playing tennis. Not pickleball. Nope, I've been playing tennis to lose deal. weight, do cardio. My sister once yeah. described you as uncomfortably attractive. Wow, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? Well, move over, Paul Brisky. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, dude, you're you're uh, you're gaining on him. I am. I am certainly gaining on him. And with this video coming out tomorrow, I'm going to be a certified star. Yeah, you are. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've got your, <laughs> your like, social media. Fuck? No, I, I'm, I'm just agreeing with you. <laughs> uh, we've got your website, yeah. rachelwolfsoncomedy.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your main Instagram, Rachel Wolfson. Yeah. Your unbelievably entertaining Wolfie DMs. Thank you. And your uh, upcoming shows. Is yeah. there anything else? Just stay perched for my journey. Yeah. Because I'm not saying, like, you know... I'm never. I just follow me along as I become a beast. That's hopefully stay perched. Yeah, yeah. Perched. I like that. I love it. That's cool. All right, good. Well, thank you so much for for coming and doing this. Thank you guys. This. Thanks yeah. for having me. That was fun. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> Could Rachel be any more likable? I mean, don't you just want to see her kick ass? Aren't you rooting for? Her? Well, I know I am, and I love to see all the comedians just saying wonderful things about her. I love watching her become more successful in her career, and uh, it's just great to see it happen. I also think I might have actually overshared on that episode. Um, I got a little bit nervous about putting this one out. I mean, I don't know what... I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just an honest guy. I'm a candid guy. I speak the truth. And the truth is, I'm grateful for you sticking around to the end of this podcast. And if I'm really truthful... I'm even more grateful if you had pre-ordered my book. If you haven't already pre-ordered my new book, please do that. Like the pre-orders are so important to how the book does, how it's received. And um, if you go to stevo.com at the top of the website, it says pre-order my new book. Then click it and pick the right distributor for the signed copy because I'm signing like a madman over here. Um, Just want to put it out there, man. I love you guys and... God, I would appreciate it if you pre-order my new book. And that's enough for me. Thank you. I love you all. Yeah, dude.